about a month ago, I did a video on this file system that Michael Larabolophronix seems to be absolutely obsessed with. I don't think I've seen a single other person talk about it as much, and for as long as he has, outside of the developer of the project. And you know what? That's great. It's always nice to have a passion. But we're not talking about Michael Larabo today. We are talking about the developer of the project, Kent Overstreet, the developer of BcashFS. Sometimes people learn after a negative encounter. Sometimes it's the first one, maybe the second, maybe the fifth, maybe the tenth. But eventually they learn. Other times, people learn what they have to say to get through the current encounter and then don't change anything that got them there. Once again, Linus Torvalds is sick of working with this project. This all started with BcashFS fixes for 6.12-RC2 submitted by Kent Overstreet. Now, to be fair, he made a slight improvement over one of the prior situations. Don't submit a giant patch set during the RC period. This is 18 separate patches across 551 lines of change code across 20 files. This is a lot more reasonable than some of the unruly patch sets from before. On the surface, this all looks above board. But Linus Torvalds had a big problem with something he was doing. I'm getting really fed up here, Kent. These have commit times from last night, which makes me wonder how much testing they got. Now, to be fair to Kent here, the commit messages are from last night because I polished up commit messages and reordered until last night. I always push smaller fixes up front and fixes that are likely to need rework to the back. The vast majority of those fixes are all two weeks old. Understandable. Back to Linus. And before you start whining again about how you are fixing bugs, let me remind you about the build failures you had on Big Endian because your patches had gotten zero testing outside your tree. That was last week, and I'm getting the strong feeling that absolutely nothing was learnt from the experience. Now, to be fair, like we saw, the patches weren't actually from last night. What he's referring to here is uh, this interaction right here where because of a patch that was not sent upstream beforehand, a patch that was clearly not at all tested, not even a basic build test, they had a broken version of the kernel in the upstream kernel. I have pulled this, referring to the patch set we are currently looking at, but I searched for a couple of the commit messages on the list and found nothing. Okay, I found your pull request, which obviously mentioned the first line of the commit messages, so the only thing he found is the thing that he's currently looking at, which obviously is not what he's looking for. He's looking for the commits being sent up to the kernel beforehand so they can have a discussion, not just sending a patch set out of nowhere. I'm seriously thinking just stopping pulling from you because I simply don't see you improving on your model. If you want to have an experimental tree, you can damn well have one outside the mainline kernel. I've told you before and nothing seems to really make you understand. I was hoping and expecting that BcashFS being mainlined would actually help development. It has not. You're still basically the only developer, and there's no real sign that will change. To be fair, there are other developers on the project, but those are developers that are involved in the project outside the kernel anyway. Being involved in the kernel hasn't really changed anything. And you seem to feel like sending me untested stuff that nobody else has ever seen the day before the next RC release is just fine. You're a smart person. I feel like I've given you enough hints. Why don't you sit back and think about it? And let's make it clear. You have exactly two choices here. Choice number one, play better with others. Choice number two, take your toy and go home. Those are the choices. Basically, learn to work in the kernel or get out of the kernel and we're not going to accept your patches any longer. Here's the thing, BcashFS might be a great file system and sometime down the line might be what distros default to, but right now, that's not the case. It has a niche audience that seems to really like it, but it is a fairly small and niche audience. 
The mainline kernel has survived thus far without BcacheFS, and it's going to survive into the future without BcacheFS. Removing it, whilst it'll be annoying for the people who use it, won't be the end of the world. And you don't get to this point with Linus with just one mistake. It is a mistake that you make over and over and over and over again. And not different mistakes, right? If you make a mistake, you make a different mistake. Obviously, those are different things to learn from. But it's the refusal to learn from making the same mistake over and over again that makes this happen. Now, let's see Kent's response. This bit here is just the PR bot. Let's skip that. Here it is. This first part we already looked at, let's go past that one. Now, referring to the Big Endian part, no. There simply aren't that many people running Big Endian. I have users building and running my trees on a daily basis. If I push something broken before I go to bed, I have bug reports waiting for me the next morning when I wake up. Are you... Are you, are you sure about that? Are you, are you sure about this? Are you sure there's not a single person building on a big Endian system that noticed that it wouldn't build with the change? Because I think that might be a lie. If it is not a lie, what you are saying is you pushed it up to the kernel before someone had tested the tree. Which, I don't know if it's better to lie or push things with zero testing. At this point, it's honestly debatable whether the experimental label should apply. I'm getting bug reports that talk about production use and working on metadata dumps where the superblock indicates the file system has been in continuous use for years. And many, many people talking about how even at this relatively early point, it doesn't fall over like ButterFS does. Let that sink in. Butterfest has been mainline for years, and it still craps out on people. I was just in a meeting two days ago, closing funding, and a big reason it was an easy sell was because they have to run Butterfest in read-only mode, because otherwise it craps out. So if the existing process, the existing way of doing things, hasn't been able to get Butterfest to a point where people can rely on it after 10 years, perhaps you and the community don't know quite as much as you think you do about the realities of what it takes to ship a working file system. Here's the important thing. The goal of the kernel processors isn't to have something completely bug-free. If ButterFS is buggy, I've not heard anyone besides this developer complain about ButterFS being terrible, but let's just assume that ButterFS is buggy. That's fine, because they are following the processes to bring code into the kernel, because your project, ButterFS, any other project in the kernel, is not the only project in the kernel. Linus is dealing with thousands of commits every single release. If people were just randomly throwing up code with no testing, no discussions prior to it being released, how do you manage that? The only way you manage this much code is to have strict processes about discussions being done beforehand, when you can submit code to Linus's tree, what you have to do beforehand, because it doesn't work otherwise. And if it is true that BcacheFS is being used in production, does need updates at this really fast rate, that's fine. But that might not be a project that is currently suitable for the kernel. It might be suitable in a couple of years, but it might be too soon right now. I've got a team lined up and just secured funding to start paying them, and it looks like I'm about to secure more, and the community is growing. I'm reviewing and taking patches from more people and regularly monitoring them on the code base. And on top of all that, you shouting about process rings pretty hollow when I remember the days when you guys were rewriting core MM code in RC kernels. Given where BcacheFS is at the life cycle of a big code base being stabilized, you should be expecting to see stuff like that here. Stuff is getting found and fixed, and then we ship those fixes so we can find the next stuff. Having clearly not taken the ultimatum as a serious threat, Linus also decides to clap back. In reference to those fixes from earlier being over two weeks old, with the patches not appearing on the list, that seems entirely irrelevant. Apparently, they are two weeks in your tree and absolutely nowhere else. This is a problem that a lot of other projects see. Wayland is a very good example of this, where discussion is happening, but nobody knows the discussion is happening because it happened at Fostum, it happened in a Matrix room or an IRC chat, and 
maybe the discussion happened, but nobody on the actual issue tracker, nobody in the centralized location where discussions should be happening, knows any discussion happened. Seriously, you completely dodged my actual argument, except for pointing out how we didn't have processes two decades ago. If you can't actually even face this, what's the point anymore? Two decades ago, you could get away with just letting people do things willy-nilly and all patches are being submitted that are making breaking changes during an RC. It's 2004. We don't know how to run the kernel yet. We do now, though. We know how to run a really big project like this, and you have to have strict processes. But do not worry. It only keeps getting better. Here is the next response from Kent. If what you want is patches appearing on the list, I'm not unwilling to make that change. This is not a matter of you being willing or not. This is a matter of, this is the bare minimum requirement. Everybody else can manage to do it. I take issue and indeed even dig my heels in when the only people asking for that are only yelling about that and aren't involved otherwise. It's the kernel. Linus is the most involved in everything. He is the BDFL. It doesn't matter if he doesn't write your code. <laughs> it's the Linus Torvalds project. But you'll find that if you talk to me as one human being to another, where we can share and listen to each other's concerns, I'm more than happy to be reasonable. But I'm not going to just toe the line when it's just yelling. Seriously. Remember, this is like... 10 different encounters into him not listening to reasonable issues and continuously doing the exact same thing. And now he is trying to play the victim. Because the last time he flipped out over a pull request, I spent the rest of the cycle telling people X, Y, and Z are fixed, but you have to build my tree instead of running a released kernel. And that gets tiresome. Some of the bugs were significant, and no issues to date have been found in the stuff you kicked back, which tell me my process is just fine. It might be fine for something outside the kernel, but you're not doing something outside the kernel. If you're in the kernel, you have to follow the kernel processes. Like, imagine, right? I don't know, what, what's, what's, a, what's a good example here? Here we go. Let's say you're sitting an exam, and there are specific rules about, you know, being silent, not having notes, using a specific kind of pencil. And you're like, hmm, well, I don't actually care about that process. I want to go and have all of my notes written out. I want to have a laptop here. I want to blast music, and I'm going to do it with a pen. Like, it doesn't matter what your process is. Your process isn't important here. So let that sink in. In order to support my user base, as well as iterate to find the next set of bugs, I have to be able to ship bug fixes in a timely manner. And if that's going to keep being an issue, perhaps I should be having those conversations with distro kernels now instead of later. I do like how he's trying to act as if he's like ext4 or butterfs, you know, file systems that are actually really important where if he did have it removed from the kernel, it would be a giant issue. If you want to do that, great, because that process seems like it's going to work better for you. This problem is not unique to bcachefs. This is the same problem that every single other kernel developer has to work within. There is a release model for the kernel. There are rules for the kernel. You are not special. You don't get special treatment because your file system is going to save everyone. Face what exactly? Because at this point, I can't even tell what it is you want. What you're reacting to keeps shifting. That's because you keep doing the same thing, and there are multiple issues with what you're doing. And you don't change any of them. And more than that, I'm done with trying to cater, and I'm done with these long-winded rants. Look. I quite enjoy the direct approach, but I'm done with having to apologize for you in order to calm people down every time this happens. If you're so convinced you know best, I invite you to start writing your own file system. Go for it. Now, if he said that to me, fair enough, you know what? I've not written my own file system. I'm just a dude on the internet. Remember there's a conversation with Linus Torvalds, you know, the guy that started the Linux kernel. The guy that runs the project. Maybe he hasn't written his own file system, but he, you know, was kind of involved in 
the whole architecture around the file system to make your file system useful. Just in case you don't realize how stupid this sounds, let's say you made skateboards during Tony Hawk's Prime, and Tony Hawk was like, hey, this skateboard sucks. I don't know anything about skateboards. It sucks for some reason. And you say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Why did you try making your own skateboard? Maybe he hasn't made his own skateboard, but I think he knows what a good skateboard is. Now, Linus remembers that he is the BDFL. He's kind of in charge of the project, so he's not going to take the bait here. I want you to work with others, including me, which means working with the rules and processes we have in place. Making the argument that we didn't have those rules 20 years ago is just stupid. We have them now because we learnt better. You don't get to say, look, you didn't have rules 20 years ago, so why should I have them now? Patches appearing on the list is not some kind of sufficient thing. It's the absolute minimal requirement. The fact that absolutely none of the patches in your pull request showed up when I searched just means that you clearly didn't even attempt to have others involved. Okay, I probably only searched for half of them and then I gave up in disgust. We literally had a BcacheFS build failure last week I showed up pretty much immediately after I pulled your tree, and because you sent in the BcacheFS fixes with the bug the day before I cut RC1, we ended up with a broken RC1. And hey, mistakes happen. But when the same absolute disregard for testing happens the very next weekend, do you really expect me to be happy about it? It's this complete disregard for anybody else that I find problematic. You don't even try to get other developers involved or follow upstream rules. And then you don't seem to even understand why I complain. I'm not interested in creating another BcacheFS. I'm contemplating just removing BcacheFS entirely from the mainline tree because you show again and again that you have no interest in trying to make mainline work. You can do it out of mainline. You did it for a decade, and that didn't cause problems. I thought it would be better if it finally got mainlined, but by all your actions, you seem to really want to just play in your own sandbox and not involve anybody else. So if this is just your project and nobody else is expected to participate, and you don't care about the fact that you break the mainline build, why the hell did you want to be in the mainline tree in the first place? And you know what? That is honestly a really, really good question. Don't worry, Kent has more to say. This has to work both ways, because when I explain my reasoning and processes and it's ignored and the same basic stuff is repeatedly yelled back, I'm just going to tune it out. I'm more than happy to work with people, but that's got to be a conversation and one based on mutual respect. It actually doesn't have to be that, because you are not the special contributor that everyone needs to appease to make the kernel work. If you don't have the basic respect to follow the kernel processes, why would anybody ever listen to what you're saying? If you want to change the kernel processes, you don't change it by just breaking the rules, you change it by opening up that discussion and laying out the changes you want to see happen. If you just break the rules, you're just breaking the rules. Now, referring to the point about the kernel not having processes 20 years ago, that wasn't my argument. My point was that a code base at an earlier phase of development that hasn't had as long to stabilize is inherently going to be more in flux. Early in development, fixing bugs is going to be a higher priority, relatively speaking, versus avoiding regressions. Sometimes the important thing is to make forward progress iterate and ship and get feedback from users. I think the way you guys were doing development 20 years ago was entirely appropriate at the time, and that's what I need to be doing now. I need to be less conservative than the kernel as a whole. Then why are you mainlined into the kernel? Why? Those fixes were all pretty basic, and broadly speaking, I know what everyone else who's been working on BcacheFS is doing and what they're working on. It's not a matter of you knowing what they're working on. Sure, you know what they're working on, but the kernel upstream has no idea what they're working on.
I do apologize for the build failure, and I'll get on the automated multi-architecture build testing that needed to happen anyways. But here we go, you gotta get a jab in somewhere. I also remind you that I'm one of the few people who's actually been pushing for more and better automated testing. Really. Really. I now have infrastructure for the community that anyone can use. Just ask me for an account. And that's been another solo effort because so few people are even interested. So the fact that this even came up grates on me. This is a problem with a technical solution and instead we're all just arguing. He really, really loves playing the victim. In response to that comment, there was a reply from an XFS developer who was very bothered by the fact that he was saying that nobody else does testing like BCashFS does, who does have automated testing and also does make the testing available for others. So, I don't know, BCashFS has got to be special even in ways which are just completely untrue. Now, referring to people getting involved in BCashFS, here's what Kent says. Linus, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I spend a significant fraction of my day on IRC and the phone with both users and other developers. No one cares because that's happening outside the kernel. Like if you spend time on things outside the kernel, it's fine. But like we're talking about what's happening in the kernel. And upstream rules has always been a fairly ad hoc thing, which even you barely seem to be able to spell out. He spelled it out like 10 times already. It's taken forever to get to yes. You do want patches on the list. That's because it is such a basic requirement that there should be no reason to spell it out. Like, oh, I didn't know you wanted us using Git. I didn't know you wanted the code written in C. Yeah. Yeah, that's the project. Like, you're laying out the minimum requirements, not even the process rules, just the bare minimum requirements of the way things are done here. And you seem to have some feeling that the volume of fixes is an issue for you, but God only knows if that's more than a hazy feeling for you. I don't know how anybody works with this person. This might be one of the most insufferable developers I've seen in the entire FOSS world. He is a really talented developer, but oh my god is he annoying. The reason he has an issue with you submitting giant unruly patches during the RC is because you're not the only developer on the project. If everybody did that, the kernel would never release. Now here's the reason why he wanted to be mainlined because I want Linux to have a file system we can all be proud of, that users can rely on, that has a level of robustness and polish that we can all aspire to, that needs to break kernel processes at every possible moment to submit absolutely crucial patches today, otherwise people might lose their data. Right. I definitely buy that. Now, I know there is this meme that, ooh, Linus is so mean, Linus is hard to work with. Linus is a saint. I don't know how you deal with someone like this and don't just say, okay, I'm just done with this conversation. I don't even want to hear your input anymore. This is gone. Or I'm going to go talk to other people involved in maintainership and we're going to decide if this is gone. I'm not listening to you anymore. I have no idea how that hasn't happened already, and I really do wonder how many more times this needs to happen for it to actually be pulled. But you know what? I kind of don't want it to be pulled because, oh my god, this is a gold mine of conversations every single time there is a patch set. It is a mess. It is a disaster. And it seems like everybody is starting to hate this person. But let me know your thoughts down below. Obviously, please don't go and harass Kent Overstreet. There's, like, there's no point doing that. Don't, that's stupid. Leave your stupid comments in the comment section down below or put them on Twitter, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Bureau Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And what would you have done in this situation? What?